Now that we better understand what we're doing with ANOVA testing, let's figure out how to do that in practice. We'll start with the assumptions for the ANOVA. These are things that are assumed to be true going into the test. So it's important that we check these assumptions, make sure that, in fact, our data do meet these assumptions. And if they don't, we need to know what to do about that. Now, the first assumption is that the data being used for your dependent variable are at the scale level. In other words, we're measuring something that can be put onto a scale that runs with equal intervals. And that our independent variable is categorical. Let's say three different groups. We have group one, group two, and the control group. That's categorical. You belong in one group or the other. You can't belong in all or two, more, two or more groups. The second assumption is that the samples are independent of each other. If they're not, we can do a repeated measures ANOVA, but for this example, we are doing an independent samples ANOVA. So our samples have to be independent of one another. Let's say we're comparing men and women on a variety of tests. Now the populations have to have approximately equal standard deviations. You may remember this assumption from the independent samples t-test. And like the independent samples t-test, we can run a Levine test to test the assumption that the standard deviations of the groups are approximately equal. Our hypotheses are similar to those we've used for t-tests, but we'll explain them and expand upon them a little more. So like a t-test, the ANOVA tests the null hypothesis that the means of each group are the same. Your experimental hypothesis would be something like the means are different. And so in its simplest form, we could write our null hypothesis as h sub 0 colon mu 1 equals mu 2 equals mu 3. And then our alternative hypothesis could simply be mu 1 does not equal mu 2, does not equal mu 3. Now in practice, many times we go into our analysis using an ANOVA with some idea about which groups should be different from which other groups. And sometimes we'll use what are called planned contrasts. So perhaps we would say, we expect that mu1 will equal mu2, but both of them will be less than mu3. So again, greater complexity. But this gives us greater control and tells us something much more interesting about our data. The critical value we will find from the F table. This is contained at the back of your notes. But this time, we will actually have more than one degree of freedom. So we want to consider the degrees of freedom between, the degrees of freedom within, and the degrees of freedom total. The degrees of freedom between is k minus 1. That's the number of treatments minus 1. So if there are four types of diets, what would our degrees of freedom between be? k minus 1 or 3. This is the number, the degrees of freedom for the numerator. In the denominator, the degrees of freedom within, that's n minus k. That is the total number of subjects minus the number of treatments, n minus k. So let's say there are 20 people and there are four groups. So 20 minus 4 would be 16. That's our degrees of freedom within. And our degrees of freedom total is n minus 1. That's our total n, 20 people, minus 1, or 19. What we would then do is take our degrees of freedom between, our degrees of freedom within, and go to the F table in which we would be able to find our critical value. So in this example, let's say we have four groups. Our degrees of freedom between would be 3. And we had a total of 20 people four groups, our degrees of freedom within would be 16. So what we would do is go to the degrees of freedom between column, where we have 3, and we'd go down to the degrees of freedom within of 16, move across, the value would be 3.24. That's our critical value. If the F ratio exceeds 3.24, then our ANOVA is statistically significant, and we say that there 
are differences between at least two of the groups. We still don't know what those differences are or which groups are different, only that two are different and we will find out which groups differ by using a post hoc test. The results we are going to write up in what is called an ANOVA summary table. This would be the results of the output that we will get eventually from SPSS. And so let's explore this ANOVA summary table to find out what it shows us. The ANOVA table tells us five things. Number one, the source of the variability, between, within, and total. Second, it tells us the degrees of freedom. That's the second column, or DF. Degrees of freedom between, degrees of freedom within, and degrees of freedom total. The sum of squares is in the third column. This is the sum of squares that we learned how to calculate back in the chapter on variability. Column 4, MS, stands for mean square, and that is actually the variance. Remember, we're doing an analysis of variance. So let's also reflect on what we learned from the chapter on variability. When you divide the sum of squares by the degrees of freedom, you get the variance. And so the number in the mean square column is going to be the number in the sum of squares column divided by the number in the degrees of freedom column. If you'd like to check the math on that, divide 4.682 by 3 and you'll get 1.561. So the mean square column represents the variance between and the variance within. And you remember how we got the F ratio? We divide the variance between by the variance within. So in this case, we would divide 1.561 by 0.272, and we would get an F ratio of 5.731. That F ratio can be compared to the critical value that we looked up on the F table, and if that 5.7 is greater than the critical value, we say there is a statistically significant difference. One of these groups is different from at least one other group, and we need a post hoc test to tell us which one. Now, because the ANOVA summary table is so complex, I've given you this one-way ANOVA summary table to use as a guide for finding each of the values. Now, at first, you may look at this and say, whoa, that's really complex. But as you're doing your homework, I think you'll find this can help a lot in determining what number goes where. So let's start with our first column, the source between and within. The between value is also the treatment. The within value is the error. The degrees of freedom between is k minus 1. And in case you forget, look below the table. k equals the number of treatments. So how many groups? Subtract 1. There's your degrees of freedom between. For the degrees of freedom within, you take n minus k, where n is the sample size total, and k is the number of treatments. For the total, n minus 1, that is the total sample size, minus 1, there's your degrees of freedom total. For sum of squares, it's SSB, SSW, and SST, that's the sum of squares between, the sum of squares within, and the sum of squares total. And those are values that you could get if you have the raw data. In the cases and the examples that I'm going to give you for this homework, we'll be working with sum of squares that have already been calculated for you. It's more important that you understand how these numbers are used because we've already had some experience with calculating sum of squares. Let's move on then to the mean square column. Mean square between, or ms sub b, is that sum of squares between divided by k minus 1, that's the degrees of freedom between. Well, where do you find those? Those will be in the second and third columns. So as you compute the values that go in each part of this ANOVA summary table, you will find them in the preceding columns. So divide the SSB number by the k minus 1 number. That gives you the mean square between. Beneath that, we can calculate mean square within, dividing the sum of squares within by n minus k. And finally, the f ratio is the mean square between divided by the mean square within. That's the number that should be around 1 if there is no treatment effect, and larger than 1 if there is a treatment effect. 
So this is how you would construct an ANOVA summary table in APA style. And this is not something we simply do to keep track of numbers for the homework. This is really the way that we would construct an ANOVA summary table if you were doing an APA write-up ultimately for publication.